All right, guys. So we're back with another point of view haircut. This is actually uh, on one of my guests named Siska. And Siska's a lot of fun. So I figured, you know what? Let's just film this. She's got really curly hair. She never lets me blow it dry. So we've all had that guest before. But you'll be able to see the overall shape uh, at the end and how she likes to wear it. She actually hasn't been, hadn't been in for quite a while. Um, she's like, you know, I forgot to reschedule before I left last time. And I couldn't get in with you for a month. So... Uh, she definitely rescheduled when she left this time. Um, so we're going to start by combing her hair back. I put a leave-in conditioner in her hair. She's got really curly hair. She loves wearing it wavy. So I figure, you know, we want to put that leave-in conditioner in there. It's going to help keep the quality of the hair and helps keep, uh, really curly hair from being frizzy when it dries. So we're going to start by sectioning at the parietal ridge back. Uh, we're going to cross over mid crown. And then we're going to go right back over parietal ridge to the recession point uh, of the head there. So we're going to comb that all through. And notice I'm using a wide tooth comb at this point. Uh, the reason I like to do that is because it's just easier to get through, especially when they have really thick curly hair. Um, using a wide tooth comb is just much easier. So we're going to comb that straight up in the air. When I section hair, I like to comb it straight up, almost like I'm putting it in a ponytail, because that's going to get all of the little hairs nice and tight, and then I can twist it up and just clip it away. So now we're going to choose our tool. I'm going to go with the Mizutani Type Z2. It's my favorite scissor. It's always my go-to. So um, I love the power of this scissor. You'll notice uh, if you can see it, uh, it's got a thicker point to the blade. It's still a point to it, and I like having that, but the blade gets thicker towards the end, which gives it a lot of power when it's cutting hair, so it allows you to really cut through the hair nice. So we're going to start center back section parting. Um, we're going to part the hair. I'm going to comb it off to the side. I've moved to a finer tooth comb. That's really important to make sure that I have my tension. I'm going to show you how Siska is kind of the bone of her head, our occipital bone, it, it goes in pretty deep. So as I'm working through it, I want to make sure I focus on that and how my finger angle is going to be working. So you can see, you can actually see in the mirror what, they, what it looks like when I'm wearing that camera. It's not the coolest thing to do, but um, that's why I choose which guest I do that with. Um, but Cisco was pretty cool about it. She, she had no problem. She was actually being very quiet at the beginning. And I was like, I'm going to voice this over so you can talk. So then, then she got more comfortable and uh, started talking to me a bit. So horizontal section, diagonal forward, slight diagonal forward. Don't get too crazy with the angles um, as we're working. We're going to cut a nice graduation into Siska's hair. Uh, we're going to get rid of that length. So um, I just want to section off nice and clean. I didn't get complicated with the sectioning. I'm never somebody that wants to do that, really. There's no point and getting complicated with it. So uh, we're going to comb her hair down, tilt her head. I'm only tilting her head. And I've talked about this before. I only tilt the head for comfort on my part so that I can be consistent. So now I'm going to use uh, my fingers as a guideline. I'm going to push the hair down. This will give me a true, the truest zero degree that I can get. Um, obviously, this is where the uh, occipital bone and the nape of her neck are really moving uh, at all different angles. So, uh, you know, this keeps me uh, cutting a nice straight line at basically a zero degree angle. It also keeps the hair from moving too, um, you know, but uh, sometimes if you hold it in the comb, it's just, it, the comb can keep the hair steady, but it gets in the way. It just doesn't work as well. So I like using my fingers. All right. And that gives us our baseline, our guideline for the rest of the haircut. And her head is already, the head shape right there is at a 45 degree angle. So basically as I'm holding that down, I'm almost cutting it at a 45. So that starts our graduation nice right away. So now as I move into the haircut, everything about it's going to be elevated uh, because I don't want to build up too much weight, especially with her curly hair. I want to make sure that um, it's a nice light, airy feel to the curly haircut. So 
We're going to work still horizontal but slight diagonal forward. Uh, cutting with a slight diagonal forward as well. The reason I like to do that is because it's really, if I cut it at a slight diagonal forward, it just gives my hand positioning more comfort so that I can be more consistent with the haircut. So if I'm just straight up vertical, for me, it's just not as comfortable. So I'm not as consistent when I'm not comfortable. So working diagonal forward, elevation is straight out from the head, following the curve of the head. So you can see my hands slide down as I work lower towards the nape of the neck. And the reason for that is the head shape is changing. So I'm following the head shape to keep a true 90 degree angle uh, with this haircut. 90 degree for me is going to be nice and soft uh, with her curly hair. And it's going to create a nice rounded shape to the layering. So just following the shape of the head. Now I'm going to work back and forth. Sometimes I like to just work one side of the head and then move to the other side. With this particular haircut, I'm just going to really get each side even and work through it. Because I think sometimes when you rush through, not rush through, but when you're working through and you do one whole side, then it's harder to find your guide when you move to the other side. So this just allows me to right away find my guide, make sure that both sides look even, and then I move on instead of, you know, trying to guess my way through it later. So my fingers are now pointing down. Uh, the reason for that is so that my combing is consistent because you always want your uh, you always want to be combing the new hair towards your guideline. So on the other side I was combing towards the center and now on this side I'm combing towards the center. And the only way to do that comfortably is to change your finger position. So pointing my fingers down, Still working palm to palm. And you can see me shift my finger angle towards the neck uh, as I cut along. Still working diagonal forward as well. So everything is the same. The only thing that changed in this haircut so far is my finger angle. Slight over direction back uh, with this because uh, obviously right around there is where everyone talks about getting a hole. Um, I think it's just important to have a slight over direction to push some of that weight because the density changes as soon as you pass around the ear. So because the density is changing and there's less hair there, I want to make sure I push a little extra weight behind the ear. All right, so now we're going to move straight vertical. Now I'm working closer to the top of the head, so it's going to allow me uh, easier to work with my body positioning. Again, I talk about comfort. Comfort makes me consistent. So um, using, I'm going to move the camera down a bit, but and now I'm standing up. I'm not sitting in the stool anymore. So we're going to work on top of our fingers. There we go. And one more adjustment. There we go. So um, combing the hair, you can see me pushing away from my body. The elevation is still at 90 degrees at this point. But then there's going to be a slight, see right there you can see it, the finished part of that section. So it starts off at 90 degrees, but then by the top, uh, by when you get closer to my knuckles, the hair that I have in my fingers, that's at pretty much a 45 degree angle. So we're watching Siska's head kind of move away. So there's going to be a nice little buildup of graduation towards the top, but I don't want to start that graduation right away. I want to wait until we're at the mid crown area, which is up by my knuckles right here, just to have a little bit of graduation uh, in this haircut. So a nice little slight buildup of weight, uh, which will sit right around her occipital bone. You can see where it's building up right there. Everything coming straight back, keeping this kind of a square back feel to the haircut, pushing the weight forward. And I'm being very consistent with my combing as well, uh, using the same side of the comb, working through it, checking everything 
It's all about the details, guys. And I, that's what I hope you get to see through these point of view haircuts is we're not rushing through haircuts in the salon right now. We are working on details and that's what makes our haircuts worth more money. So now we're going to work the other side vertically as well. So I'm going to part it at the division point and just work on that back section. Take a little bit of the hair from the previous side as my guideline. We'll comb it out of the way. But I'm still standing on the same side of the head. And the reason we're doing that is, again, for consistency. Now I'm going to be, the only difference is I'm going to be pulling the hair towards my body uh, because the guideline is in front of me now. So before I was pushing the new hair into the guide, now I'm pulling the new hair towards me and towards the guide. Just so that guide stays where it should be. If you push the guide right now, if I were to push that guide into my new section, I'd be moving it. And then by the time you get done with the haircut, you have one side that's way longer than the other because you kept pushing the guide further and further away. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping the guide where it should be. Still vertically following the round of the head, everything coming straight back, no over direction. Working above my fingers with this cutting, but just again that one blade moving. Notice throughout this whole entire haircut, I don't just comb the hair and cut it right away. We work that section. So I comb it over and over again to get every little piece of hair um, in the comb. That's how you end up with those little stragglers is you just quickly comb the hair up and then that's it. You can see I'm working the base of that section, combing through until I get every bit of hair even, then I cut it. I don't just comb it up and, and cut it right away. Sometimes in the salon we get in a rush and you can see I'm almost at that edge. Could I take it all on my hand? I probably could, but that doesn't mean I should. So make sure that you don't rush through anything and I can grab that last little bit. I can cleanly see my guide through it and then I can go in and cut it. You don't want to rush anything or try to do too much at once because that's just going to set the whole entire haircut off. There you go, you can see a nice little graduation feel to it. Um, you can see the nice line at her neck. So, um, so far so good, the haircut's got a really good feel to it. Now we're gonna check it, just make sure everything feels even. Just a quick check, it's, it doesn't have to be crazy. In this song, we don't have to go through, um, you know, and spend 15 minutes cross-checking it. Just make sure everything's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna start on the left-hand side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take vertical sections and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna work with a high elevation uh, because what I wanna do is collapse the interior of this haircut and allow the curls to kind of fall over from both sides. So we're gonna start uh, still working over my fingers, creating a concave shape uh, within the sides of the haircut. So just, you can still see moving that one blade, but working with a high elevation. Uh, keeping the length as well. So right now I'm disconnecting the length from the bottom, uh, but we're gonna go back in and take that length off later. So I just really wanna remove the interior of this haircut and allow a nice shape, because basically what happens if, on the interior right there, right at the parietal ridge, that, that um, bit of hair, that's going to help hold up the rest of the shape of the haircut. If you have curly hair and you build up a graduation in the entire part of the haircut, what's going to happen is it's just going to get too big at the bottom. So this allows us to remove some of that weight from the interior and allows the top to fall over it. So we're still going to work vertically here. The only thing we're going to change in this part is I'm going to be standing in front of Siska because I still want to be combing the hair in the same direction. So um, on the left side, I was combing the hair back. 
Now I want to comb the hair to the back as well. So I'm going to stand in the front and push the hair backwards, uh, but still doing the same uh, cutting pattern there. We're doing this in a few sections, over directing everything to right behind the ear, which is nice because it pushes the weight forward still, but we're removing weight using that concave layering technique. So the haircut's coming together. You can see how the weight feels removed from there. Uh, it's going to be a nice airy feel to the haircut. Now I'm going to split the top in half, um, really just at the um, the division point of the head. And what I'm going to do is comb it straight up in the air. I'm going to take a guide from the below the parietal where I just cut and I'm going to work short to long so the longest point is going to be in the center of that section so just cutting it straight up in the air uh, probably about a 45 degree angle to my fingers uh, just to take it short and allow that that middle part of this haircut to be the longest so it can kind of flop back and forth from side to side and over top of those curls that we have on the side of Cisco's haircut. So again, just basically following the round of the head with my fingers, but then slightly elevating my elbow so that um, we get that point right in the middle of our head there. Over directing everything back to that center point as well. So a stationary guide right here. That'll push weight forward and put place weight to the top of her head so that it can kind of bounce back and forth. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to split it again. And this is what's going to ensure almost like a rooftop feel. You can see that there's going to be about a, like a peak in the top of her haircut. So I'm going to run from the guide there. So there's our guide. And I'm going to cut straight up again using that same finger angle. So it's just putting the, the very center of her head the heaviest point. Still over directing back. I'm standing in front of her now because I want to be combing the new hair to the guide and still cutting short to long just like I did on the opposite side. There we go. And then one more section. Cleaning it up. And there it is. So you can see the movement in it, and we're going to play around with it for a minute, but um, I'm going to talk into Siska. How do you feel about the haircut? Uh, which side are you parting it on? Because the great thing about this haircut, it didn't matter which side she parts on. So now I'm going to figure that out, and we're going to go in and work the, uh, the fringe area. I think she gave me the the normal answer. It doesn't matter, but there, but she really does have a side that she likes. So, um, you know, I, I kind of talked her into telling me which side works the best. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and cut a nice fringe for her. So I'm going to work from the from the parting down to the temple area. I'm gonna allow the rest of that hair to kind of fall out of it and section it away. I don't wanna mess with all of that at once. And I don't want her to have too thick of a fringe either. So we're gonna part the hair where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna work diagonal forward and then over directing the hair towards myself. So she wants her fringe to sit above her eyebrows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an initial cut and check the length of that to make sure that that's, you know, about where she wants it. And that seems to be pretty good. She likes that length, so we're going to continue through. And this is where I can decide how far back do I want to go with the fringe, how thick do I want it to be. Um, 
I don't want it to be too thick, so I'm just going to really follow her hairline for a bit. But I am going to go in and use that as my guideline. I am doing a nice elevation to it so that it's a nice light fringe and because uh, I don't want to create too much weight either. So uh, it's not sitting down at her nose. It's hard to see it from this angle, but I'm actually elevating it pretty much straight out from the head um, in that part. So there you go. That's all I did. Three sections and, you know, the fringe is good. Now we're going to over direct the, the side there and I'm going to comb it until basically we run out of hair right at the temple. So I'm going to push that little bit back. Taking nice clean sections, keeping it organized still and uh, just clean it up, connecting the two sides together. So now I'm talking to Siska to see what she thinks of the length. Um, she wants to take the sides a little shorter. She said it's flipping out. Um, I personally like it that way. Um, I like a little bit more length in the front a bit, especially with curly hair because it's not like it's in too exaggerated like a Victoria Beckham feel but um, or dated in that way. With curly hair, it just curls up a little bit more. But Siska is just a wash-and-go kind of, kind of lady. So... Um, we're going to take it and blend it in nice. So you can see I sectioned at the parietal, push the rest over. Because I don't want to cut too much at once. You don't want to just go in there and cut it off. And Siska, her ears are a little bit bigger. So what I did was I comb the hair down and then I tap it with my finger. Just to lift that hair up a bit so it doesn't interfere with how it's going to fall later. And then I go through slowly. I'll adjust the camera one more time. Comb the hair down into its natural fall and just go through using the scissor to cut it through it. And then I check that length before I move any further because why would I keep working um, until I know that we have the length that she's looking for. So I think she wanted to go a little bit shorter, so we're going to comb it down again. And I'm going to work just a little bit more. I'm going to take that line up a bit, following the jawline. She likes it to come a little bit above her, her jawline. So um, and even here, combing it down, it's got a little flip to it. So probably in my mind, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to hold it in my fingers because that will help me control it. So I like to keep it at its natural fall, but if it has a little kick to it, I'm going to hold it in my fingers with just a light tension. Um, not gripping it hard because I don't want to take it out of its natural fall, but uh, sometimes you got to hold on to it with your hand. So now I'll pull the rest of her hair over again and check it because I already removed the weight that I wanted to from her hair. So it doesn't necessarily mean in every haircut you're going to have to go back in and redo the entire haircut. Because I cut those concave layers in there, I'm going to go in and just blend the line a little bit. But it, I'm sure it, I already did the layering. So um, you can see I held it out there and I was like, well, that's, there's no need to go in and cut it there. So, um, But if you look at when I held her hair up before and I cut those concave layers in, all it did was preserve the length and kept it nice and light at the length. So it allows me to go in and just cut her length and not mess up the shape of the haircut, I guess. Same thing on this side. Combing it through. And then this side, her hair doesn't really kick out like that. So um, I'm going to say I probably do not need to hold it in my fingers on this side. You can just go in and cut it, and we're good to go. So we mess it up a little bit. Siska is so funny, and she's been coming to me for probably about six years. And she's been coming to the salon for, I think, 10 years. And um, 
I got her as a guest after uh, one of her stylists left and, you know, she's been coming to me forever. And it's funny because I cut her hair, we style it up, she loves it. Then she'll go take a walk around town and then she'll come back later and she'll show me that it's dry and it looks great. She's never let me blow dry her hair ever. But just being able to put in this curly shape, starting off with the um, the leave-in conditioner so that, you know, because Cisco doesn't like to blow it dry, it's going to keep the style nice. And then just going in and putting in a nice solid shape in there is going to help create the nice curly hair. I think with curly hair, we think we need to texturize it like crazy, but you don't. If you do a precise haircut, we took out the interior, we cut those concave layers, and I think that really makes this haircut shine. And, you know, Cisco's going to go walk around, show it off, show it off all over town. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys like this haircut. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube for more of these point of view haircuts and everything else that we're doing on freesaloneducation.com. But hope you guys like the video and we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.